Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Tololipop and today we are doing a full in-depth lineup comparison video on the Giant Talon series. I'm going to go over every single difference the Talon bikes have with one another, focusing on the various components like the suspension forks, the drivetrains, and the tires. And for a quick background, the Giant Talon lineup is essentially Giant's entry-level lineup for mountain biking, and there are both affordable models in the series, but also more expensive top-end models for more experienced riders or for people who want a better equipped bike. There are five total models in this range, though not all of them are available in the United States. Regardless, I will be covering all of them in this video, and those are the Talon Zero, Talon One, Talon 2, Talon 3, and Talon 4. Now I already made another video comparing the 2020 Talon bikes with the 2021 bikes to show you all the updates Giant made for this lineup, so check that out if you want to see those changes. Additionally, since these are Giant's entry-level mountain bikes, they are very comparable to the Trek Marlin bikes or the specialized Rockhopper bikes, which I have already made full lineup comparison videos for. The Talons are thus more cross-country oriented bikes, but they can definitely handle some rougher terrain as well. Another important thing to note about these bikes across the board is that the extra small frame size bikes come with only 27.5 inch diameter wheels, and the extra extra large frame bikes only come with 29 inch diameter wheels. In all other sizes like small, medium, and large, you can choose if you want a 29 inch wheel which will roll faster and make the bike more stable at higher speeds, or a 27.5 inch wheel which will make the bike easier to maneuver and more nimble. It's also worth noting that none of the bikes in this video come with tubeless ready tires, but all of them do use the same tubeless ready rims from Giant. And for the sake of this video, I want to quickly mention that the 2021 Talon 4 and Talon 3 are actually the exact same bike besides the brakes and some color options, so you'll see a lot of similarities between those two. But like always, I will be making tables at the end of this video which will show all the differences these bikes have in one place, and I will be discussing which bike will be the best for your specific riding style while I show those. And something I learned while making my last Talon video is that Giant for some reason chooses to use completely different components on some of these bikes in different countries, so for example the suspension fork or the entire drivetrain might be different if you buy some of these bikes in the United States versus in the United Kingdom, and I've tried to find all of those changes as well and will highlight those in this video, but please let me know if you notice any more and I will add an update in the comments section below. Now let's move on to the comparison. I'm going to talk about all the similarities among these bikes first, so we have a good baseline to work off of. The components that are shared among all five bikes are the talon frame itself, the stem, the handlebars, the seat post, the seat, the pedals, the bottom bracket, and the rims. I'll put up a picture of the 2021 talon frame specifications right now, but I did cover those differences already in my 2020 versus 2021 Talon video, so I won't do that again here. As for the other components, I'm not going to go in depth about those since if you do get any of the Talon bikes, you will get these regardless of which one you choose. But now onto the differences. Besides the colors, the things that are different about these bikes are the prices, the suspension forks, the brakes, the tires, the hubs, and the drivetrains, which consist of things like the cranksets, cassettes, and shifters. Let's start with the price. Now the Talon 3 and Talon 0 are not available in the US, so I do not have their prices in US dollars, but I will go over all the prices I do know. So the Talon 4 is priced at $500 or £400, while the Talon 3 is £450, and the Talon 2 is $620 or £530. The Talon 1 increases more to $830 or £650, and the Talon 0 is the most expensive at £850. Moving on, let's discuss the suspension. All of the bikes use 100mm travel suspension forks besides the extra small and small frame size bikes, which all have 80mm of travel instead. The Talon 4 and Talon 3 use the same coil spring suspension fork, 
which is the SR Suntour XCE 29 or SR Suntour XCE 27.5 depending on the wheel size. This fork is an entry level fork with 28mm stanchions, but it makes sense given the price point of these bikes. The Talon 2 upgrades to the SR Suntour XCT 30, 29, or 27.5, which is still a coil spring fork, but it has wider 30mm stanchions for more strength and stability, and it has a fork lockout feature which allows you to lock out the suspension to basically make it fully rigid, which helps for going faster in flat areas. The Talon 1 is a bit different because Giant states that it comes with either the RockShox Judy coil fork with 30mm stanchions, or the SXC32 RL29 or 27.5 with 32mm stanchions, which is Giant's own suspension fork. The RockShox Judy is a good upgrade from the SR Suntour coil forks as the RockShox brand is very reliable and well known, but the other giant branded fork is an air fork which is nice because air forks are lighter in weight and much more adjustable for the rider's specific weight. And lastly we have the Talon Zero which uses the same SXC32 air fork just mentioned with those wider 32mm stanchions for added stiffness and stability. Now let's talk about the brakes. The Talon 4 uses Tektro mechanical disc brakes, while every other bike in the lineup uses Tektro TKD143 hydraulic disc brakes. The hydraulic disc brakes offered in most models will perform much better than the mechanical brakes in terms of stopping power and working in all weather conditions, and they will also require less maintenance overall. The 143 hydraulic brakes are pretty entry level hydraulic brakes, but they should get the job done fine. Next, we have the tires. All of them are wire bead tires, but both the Talon 4 and Talon 3 use Maxxis Icon 2.2 inch wide tires, which are cross country focused tires that are known to be fast, while the other three bikes go to the Maxxis Recon 2.4 inch wide tires, which have a different tread pattern and offer more traction and stability on those trails. It should be noted though that on Giant's website in the United States, the Talon 2 uses Kenda Booster 2.2 inch wide tires instead of the Maxxis Recon tires. These Kenda tires are more comparable to the Maxxis Icon tires in the Talon 3 and 4. Additionally, I am not sure why there are so many discrepancies between the website and real life, but I have seen videos and images of these bikes and they seem to come with Maxxis Ardent 2.25 inch wide tires in some cases as well, so to be completely honest I cannot say for certain which tires your Giant Talon 2 will come with unfortunately. The hubs are actually mainly the same as they are shared between all the Talon bikes besides the Talon Zero. Most bikes use the Giant Tracker Sport loose ball bearing hubs, while the Talon Zero goes to the Shimano sealed bearing hubs which will require less maintenance. Now let's move on to the final and largest difference among these 5 bikes, which is the drivetrain. I'm going to quickly talk about the overall drivetrains right now, and then I'll move on to the specific components in the drivetrains after. So the Talon 3 and 4 have the exact same 2x7 drivetrain which uses a lot of different parts from Shimano and Pro Wheel. This drivetrain has 2 chainrings in the front and 7 gears in the rear for a total of 14 speeds. The Talon 2 in the United States uses a mixed drivetrain as well, but this time it is a 1x9 drivetrain which will be better for the trail since it has 9 speeds and is thus simpler. The UK version of this bike has a mixed Shimano 2x8 drivetrain which is an upgrade over the Talon 3 and 4, but not as trail oriented as the one in the US version of this bike. Then the Talon 1 uses a mainly Shimano Dior M4100 1x10 drivetrain, which is a good drivetrain to see at this price point since it is Shimano branded and is a mountain biking specific drivetrain, which will be perfect for beginners. And lastly, the Talon Zero comes with a really nice Shimano Dior M6100 1x12 drivetrain, which is amazing to see at this price point as 1x12 drivetrains are preferred for serious mountain biking, and this M6100 is one of the higher level group sets from Shimano Dior. But for the actual components in the drivetrain, let's start with the shifters. The Talon 4, 3, and 2 all use the Shimano Altus shifters, but the Talon 2 has an 8 or 9 speed shifter depending on the country, while the other two bikes use 7 speed shifters. The Talon 2 may actually come with Micro Shift Advent shifters instead since I've been seeing some bikes with those. The Talon 1 goes to the Shimano Dior M4100 shifter which will just shift a bit smoother and quicker, 
while the Talon Zero goes to the Shimano Dior M6100 shifters, which will be slightly more responsive and fast. All of these shifters have Shimano's Rapid Fire Plus technology, so you can downshift up to three gears at a time to make pedaling easier on uphill climbs. Now for the rear derailers, the Talon 4 and 3 use the Shimano Tourney entry-level derailer, while the Talon 2 in the United States upgrades to the Microshift Advent derailer, which has a clutch mechanism that adds tension to the chain so it's less likely to skip gears or fall off the bike. In the UK, however, this bike uses the Shimano Acero rear derailleur, which does not have a clutch, but it is still an upgrade over the Tourney since it will shift smoother and faster. The Talon 1 goes to the Shimano Dior M5120 rear derailleur, which also has a clutch, and the Talon 0 goes to the Dior M6100 clutch derailleur as well for the 12-speed drivetrain, which will be the smoothest and quickest shifting. For the cassettes, the Talon 4 and 3 actually use freewheels, which are less expensive to manufacture and often have a narrower gear range. But they use Shimano 14 to 28 tooth freewheels, meaning that there are 14 teeth on the smallest gear or cog and 28 teeth on the largest cog. The Talon 2 uses an actual cassette, which is, according to Giant's website, a Microshift Advent 12 to 46 tooth in the United States. But this is actually impossible since Microshift does not make this cassette in a 9 speed version, so that's another mistake, and the cassette is actually an 11 to 42 tooth 9 speed. And it is also a Shimano 12 to 32 tooth in the UK. The gear range in the US cassette is very wide and a great upgrade to see, especially at the price point of this bike, while the UK model's cassette is typical to see at this price point. The Talon 1 uses the Shimano Dior 10 speed cassette with 11 to 42 teeth, and the Talon Zero upgrades to the Dior 10 to 51 tooth 12 speed cassette. Now you may notice as the price goes up, the gear range in these cassettes gets wider, so the smallest cog has less teeth which translates to a harder gear for faster pedaling, and the largest cog gets more teeth for easier pedaling while going uphill. Thus the Talon Zero will have the most efficient drivetrain for pedaling. And lastly we have the crankset. The Talon 4 and 3 both use the Pro Wheel Forged 2x crankset which has 36 teeth on the larger chainring and 22 teeth on the smaller chainring. The Talon 2 uses a Pro Wheel 30 or 32 tooth crankset in the United States which only has one chainring, but in the UK the Talon 2 actually has a 2x drivetrain with its Pro Wheel 36 to 22 tooth crankset. Having the 1x drivetrain is much simpler for trail use and removes the front derailleur so there's less chance of malfunctions in the whole system. The Talon 1 thus has a 1x as well, and it also uses the Pro Wheel Charm crankset with 30 or 32 teeth. And the Talon 0 goes to the Pro Wheel MPX 30 or 32 tooth crankset, which just has a slightly better construction than the Pro Wheel Charm. But that is all I have for this video. I'm going to show those completed tables right now while I talk about which of these bikes you should get for your specific riding style. So starting off with the Talon 4 and Talon 3, these bikes are for people who are on a much tighter budget or for people who just need a fairly reliable bike for commuting or for light trails, since this bike is not really intended to go on rougher trails too often. The Talon 3 just has the upgraded hydraulic brakes which is a nice feature because of the better stopping power reliability, but personally if I had to choose one of these 5 bikes I'd go for the United States version of the Talon 2 because it has that 1x9 drivetrain with a clutched rear derailleur and Maxxis tires and a lockout on the suspension fork so a lot of great features at an amazing price point. Even though not all the components are Shimano or RockShox and other name brands, they still seem pretty good, especially for the price point of $620. So the Talon 2 is great as a beginner mountain bike, and it should be able to handle rougher trails fine if you're just getting into mountain biking. And the Talon 1 is pretty similar, but it just uses some upgraded parts and goes to the full-on Shimano Dior 1x10 drivetrain rather than the Microshift one, and thus the Talon 1 should be more reliable and durable. The Talon Zero is clearly the best bike with the amazing 1x12 Dior drivetrain that is perfect for trail use. I'd say if you are a beginner mountain biker, the Talon 1 or Talon Zero are great options since they are not too expensive, but if you really want to start mountain biking and are on a tighter budget, the Talon 2 is an amazing option, especially in the United States. 
Anything below the Talon 2 will likely not be as reliable on actual mountain bike trails, but honestly, if that is your budget, you can make do with it for now and upgrade later on. So with that, if you enjoyed this video or if it helped you out, please leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you noticed any mistakes or have any questions or suggestions for me. But besides that, thank you all so much for watching and keep biking.